Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and this book is also from Walt Disney's and I have so much Walt Disney books, I just love them so I hope you do too and this book is called Donald Duck's Toy Train so I chose this one because I think it will be a really nice book so let's start Duck had a new toy drain in his garden and it was a beauty too. It had a shiny black engine with a, with a coal truck behind where Donald rode because he was too big for the toy engine's cab. Donald train, Donald's train had a coach, a mail van and a red guards van. Though none of his friends could go inside because it was a toy sized train. <clears throat> there was a little station beside the track, Canyonville, the station sign said, and around the station a little village spread with houses and churches and stores. Only nobody lived there because it was too small and that did seem too bad. There's a church here. <clears throat> Houses here, trees, hills. Oh, and here's a little woodcutter. Well, I'm not sure. There's a windmill. I'm not sure. Oh, and there's Canyon. There's a tree track. <clears throat> One day, Donald was laying some new tra train tracks when he came up against a great big tree. This will have to go, said Donald Duck. It, it, it's much too big for my toy train. So he had the big tree moved away. Now up in that treetop was the cozy home of two chipmunks, Chip and Dale. They were away at the time, gathering nuts for their winter food. Soon they came back with great armors of nuts and got ready to climb to their home. But what was this? The tree was gone. They could scarcely believe their eyes. In its place, Donald Duck had put a toy-sized tree just the size for his little toy train. But, but it's not big enough for a home like this. For us, cried Chip. No, sir. Said, cried Dale. Well, this was a problem. Where could they live? The two sad chipmunks sat and thought that that didn't get them anywhere. So they started walking slowly down the railroad tracks. Soon they came to the train where Donald had left it. Looks like fun, said Chip. Let's go for a ride, said Dale. So they hopped into their engine cab, cab just there, just which was just their size. They stroked, they stoked up the little fire with a shovel of coal, and away they trudged, trudged down the track. They roared through tunnels, uphill and down dale. It was a really wonderful ride. Soon they came to the town and they rang the engine bell and pulled on the brakes and stopped. Quite a town, said Chip. Let's look around, said Dale. So they rattled the doors of the little stores but no one was there to sell them anything. They knocked at the doors at the little houses, but nobody answered their knocks. One little doorbell swung open at their touch, so Chip and Dale walked inside. This is starting to get like little gold lots of free affairs. Inside the house, they found chairs and lamps and tables and beds, and exactly chipmunk size. So Chip and Dale moved right in. But not far away, a danger lurked. It was Donald Duck, 
and Donald Duck was mad. Someone has stolen my train. He fumed. Best toy train in the world. He fussed, and it's probably wrecked by now. It isn't anyone who can manage a real little train like that. Just then, he looked up and saw the train parked at the station as neat as it could be. Near the train, he found tiny footprints leading straight to the little house. Donald went to the window and peeked in. Chip and Dale were curled up in bed, taking naps. Well, it is a vacuum said Donald. What's more, they're just the right size. So Donald made friends with Chip and Dale. He delivered tiny bottles of milk to their door and teeny loaves of bread. And he let them drive his fine toy train while he rode on a coach behind. It's much more fun, said Donald happily, to play with folk who are just the right size. So that's the end of the story. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it a lot. So please subscribe and like and share. Bye.